Well, Razorback fans, we are getting closer and closer to the start of Razorback football season, and I have three players that each and every one of you need to be on the lookout for, and I have three different reasons as to why. So let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend as we are just about 30 plus days, like really getting close to the Razorback football season starting up and couldn't be more excited about it. Couldn't be more excited about it. It's almost getting to the point to where I'm wanting to stop talking about it and just actually start having games to watch and games to check out. But also, you know, practices, fall camp's going to be starting up too, and we'll get a chance to hear from Sam Pittman and some coaches and everybody during some of these press conferences as the year's going to go along. But I I wanted to do today's podcast, or at least start today's podcast, with one particular topic that I think we all have been thinking about or maybe asked about, because each and every year there seems to be a player that comes forth I wouldn't say out of nowhere, but at least one that ends up having a big year and having having a big impact to maybe didn't get talked about a lot in the preseason. For instance, I think last year when you were going into the season, uh, not a whole lot of people, I feel like at least, we're not talking about a guy like Dwight McLaughlin or even a Quincy McAdoo because of what he was able to do on the defensive side of the ball. But they obviously had a, a pretty nice impact on the season. and played a lot better than some of their counterparts did, at least last season. But also, Rashad DeBinion was like a guy that had a breakout year and, and looked really good as a true freshman. So, you know, there, there's different people that you can look at and, and see it each and every year where it turns out that way. Chris Paul was another one. And I feel like this year there's three players that I'm going to be interested in seeing, or at least three guys that I feel like are going to be pretty impactful players for various reasons on this year's team. And I chose three players because I felt like with the way that college football is set up now, you have three different types of players, essentially, when it comes from one year to the next. So I'm going to talk about one particular transfer I feel like is going to be a breakout star. One player who was on the team last year, on the Razorback football team last year, that is going to be a breakout star. And one true freshman that I feel like is going to be an impact player. And so we'll go through uh, those three players because, again, some of you may disagree with it. I mean, there's not a right answer to this. It's more just an opinion on it. But just the more I've thought about it and the more I've looked at it, these are the three players I I picked. And I'm going to start with the transfer. Now, Arkansas has done a really good job out of the transfer portal since Sam Pittman's arrived. They've gotten a lot of players that have made immediate impacts, some uh, on the offensive and some on the defensive side of the ball. But I believe this year, the guy that's going to be a huge impact player is going to be Trajan Jeffcoat. Uh, I think you say Trajan. He, the transfer from Missouri. He's a redshirt senior. This is his final year of play. He's 6'4", 280 pounds. He's a defensive end. And he has plenty of SEC experience. In fact, the craziest thing about him is that he was actually named on the 2020 first team All-SEC which he was a redshirt sophomore. And that was according to the AP and coaches. So you're talking about a unanimous all-SEC first team. Where he had 23 tackles, six tackles for the loss, six sacks, seven quarterback hurries, and a forced fumble. Uh, his six sacks led the team, six tackles for loss, like third on the season. And then his redshirt junior, he started all 13 games with 34 tackles, 23 of which were solo stops, and had 10 tackles for loss for 56 yards and three and a half sacks. And this past year, he didn't start every game. He saw action in all 12 games, making 10 starts uh, to run his total to 47 games in his career. Finished the season with 21 total tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, and a sack. And you start to see that, and you're like, okay, so what happened from 2020 to 2021 to 2022? Seemed like he kind of got less and less production. Well, a lot of cases, um, there could be reasons behind that. You could, you could say it's bad coaching. You could say it's just maybe regression. It could say, Uh, A a lot of different factors. However, I believe that because of the fact that he is a guy who has plenty of SEC experience, 
and just what I saw in the, in the spring and what I think of Deke Adams as a defensive line coach, a very well experienced and uh, very well, uh, very good and talented coach. I believe that he's going to make a difference on this guy immediately. And in his final year, he's going to really want to show out. I think he's got the physicality. I think he's got the, you know, the experience. Obviously, he's a 28 in 2018. He was a true freshman and he played in all the games, which was weird. So in 2018, he saw auction in all 13 games, but in 2019, he redshirted. So I, I think that just in his final year, he's really going to uh, break through and be a huge part of that defensive line and the success opposite side of Landon Jackson. And, you know, I think it's funny too where Arkansas has gotten a couple of or a few transfers from Missouri on the defensive line, and they've actually done really well. I thought Trey Williams was really good. Uh, back in 2021 when they added him, even Markel Utzi. I wouldn't say he was a, a, a non-player, but he started and he did some good things there too. So I feel like it's just a matter of getting those Missouri defensive linemen to head over to Arkansas where they can really show out their abilities. Might be something to that. But I think he's going to have a big year. And I think as long as he stays healthy and uh, just knowing that he's been there before and been a success across the board, then I feel like he's going to have another great year for Arkansas too. So that's the transfer I feel like is going to be the standout. Um, the player that was on the team last year, and I've been going back and forth on this one, and I know that a lot of you have probably talked about this too, but I'm going to go with Isaiah Satania, uh, the wide receiver from Fayetteville, Arkansas, go Purple Dogs, who he's a four-star player coming out of high school. Uh, he was a redshirt player last year, and he's going to be a redshirt freshman. Now, the wide receivers have always been about transfers when it comes to Arkansas, whether it's Isaac Tesla or Tyrone Broden, you know, guys that have come in and uh, have really you know, been big-bodied guys, which Isaiah Satania is not. He's 5'11", 178 pounds, but he's a speedster. He's a true, legitimate speedster. And I honestly feel like that's what Arkansas has needed more so than anything in their wide receiver group. Listen, there's always greatness that come along with physicality. Physicality is great. You love to have tall guys to go up there and get it, but there's something to be said about those speedster guys, about those that, those smaller speedster guys, about a Jarius Wright, about about a Joe Adams, you know, guys that can just go out there and as soon as they get the ball in their hands, watch out because they can score from anywhere on the field. And I think he's going to have that capability after a year of development and building that rapport with KJ and knowing that the offense is now going to be running through Danny Enos, where he likes to find those types of wide receivers. I think he did a good job with like. Again, talking about size guys, like a Drew Morgan, who was a little bit of, of a smaller wide receiver, Jared Cornelius, who was a smaller wide receiver. Uh, I think that he's going to work him in there too. And I think Isaiah is going to really showcase his speed and his ability and uh, everything that goes along with it too. So he's going to be the guy that was on the team last year, didn't get a whole lot of run, plays here and there, showed out in the spring game, and you watch. He's going to be, he's going to be a dude that gets some touchdowns this year and really helps out the team in general. And then finally, the true freshman. The one that I think is going to be a guy that plays. Now, this one was difficult because, man, you never know with freshmen. You really don't. I mean, you haven't seen him play much. Uh, there's some that you have expectations for, but you just never really know. So this one's truly more of a shot in the dark, but I have some confidence in it. And I think TJ Metcalf is going to be the guy. He's a defensive back, true freshman. He's a four-star player, according to Rivals. He's the number 33 safety in the country and the number 23 player out of Alabama. Playing on both sides of the ball, so he's got a lot of uh, great experience in that. Uh, as a senior, he had 65 and a half total tackles, two tackles for lost, 10 pass breakups, and an interception, three forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. And he had offers to uh, Florida State, Indiana, Maryland, Miami, Michigan, Michigan State, Mississippi State, Missouri, Nebraska, Ole Miss, Penn State, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, West Virginia, Virginia Tech, and others. And I've just heard really great things about this guy. And we know the secondary is going to need all the help that they can get at the depth and then that perspective. And knowing that he's a safety, which Arkansas obviously needs a lot of help in that depth position. Is he going to start this year? Is he going to be the perennial starter? Maybe. Probably wouldn't count on it, at least not at this point. But I think as a true freshman, he's going to see, some, he's going to see the field. And I think he's going to uh, be a guy that gets you excited about the years to come uh, with his abilities in the backfield and really showcasing how uh, even as a true freshman, he's wiser beyond his years. So, uh, yeah, I think I think he's going to be a big pickup, and uh, he's going to be a difference maker back there. At least I'm hoping so, because if you can get a freshman to make a difference and takes the pressure off of some of the older guys uh, to make those differences too. So there you have it. I got Jeff Coat, I got Zatania, and I got Medcalf. Those are the three players I feel like you're going to have to watch for if you're Razorback football fans this year, because you got a transfer, you got a returning player, and you got a true freshman. So let's see how all that plays out, folks. 
Let me tell you about eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. And it's the same thing when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head over to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. And when you shop on eBay Motors, and with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I got some basketball news that it actually happened Friday, late Friday. Uh, so I haven't really had a chance to uh, dive into it. But it looks like, at least now for the time being, I feel like we've said this before, but the Razorback basketball team have finalized their roster for the upcoming basketball season as they were able to add a former Southern Miss transfer forward. D is it Dina 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 J Dina J Dina J Dina J Harris I'm gonna go with that I'm terrible at names so just go ahead and judge away uh, Dina J Harris because uh, of the program he announced uh, his commitment on social media he's six seven about two hundred pounds and he entered into the transfer portal back on April 25th and committed to New Mexico State but reopened his recruitment on June 12th and later enrolled at Arkansas he averaged nine points a game. And about five and a half rebounds a game while playing 24 minutes per game last season. He shot 56.2% from the field and 68% from the free throw line and missed his only three point attempt as a redshirt junior. So he is not a shooter. He appeared in 32 games and started 13 contests while averaging three points, two and a half rebounds, and averaging 14 and a half minutes as a sophomore. At a season high of 12 points and a season high of seven rebounds against UAB on March 2nd. So he also played in the 2020-2021 season. He played in 22 of 25 games, eight starts, and averaged three and a half points and four and a half rebounds per game. And he also redshirted. He's from uh, Mississippi, so he's from Columbus, Mississippi. And he led uh, their school, the high school of Columbus High School, to 6A state titles as a sophomore and a senior. And earned game MVP honors his final season after scoring 20 of his 26 points in the second half. As a senior where he had two or 12 and a half points, five and a half rebounds, one uh, about two assists and one and a half steals. He also has two years of eligibility remaining. So there you have it. There's the final addition to uh, Arkansas's Razorback basketball team and the, uh, the roster that they're trying to put together. I'm not going to sit here and try to pretend that it's like, oh, man, okay, blah, forget Keon Minifield. You got this guy coming in. Uh, I'm not going to say that. Uh, and that's not a slight against him. It's not a slight against... Uh, Harris at all like it, it's more of when you get put in a position like this when you're Arkansas and you're counting on Minifield to be eligible to play and he's not the transfer portal is probably a little bit more slim pickings and you got to get somebody on campus you got to get somebody on your roster and so they decided to go this route and from my understanding it's been in the works for a while he's been on campus for a while uh, he's been trying to figure things out and just kind of waiting because, you know, Arkansas obviously knew a little bit about Minifield's situation and wanted to have some sort of plan in place. And this is the direction that they went. Do I expect Harris to play a lot? I don't know. Maybe. But is, uh, is he a guy that could maybe just add some depth at a position? I mean, he's 6'7", 200 pounds. He's got some length to him. He's not a shooter by any stretch. So maybe can he be a guy that can just kind of be that defensive dude that does some things down low? Maybe so. Maybe so. I don't. It's hard to really gauge how it's going to translate when he goes from Southern Miss to Arkansas, uh, especially in him, you know, originally committed to New Mexico State. But listen, you got to trust in Muss, and you got to trust in what he's doing. And obviously, uh, he feels that there's some sort of value that he can offer to Arkansas to bring him in on campus. But it looks at this point that now the roster is officially finalized, and we know what we're looking at now. We know what it's going to look like. We know what it's going to see as far as uh, who's all going to have a spot and the transfers and the returning players and everything. 
And just, you know, it doesn't change my mind here um, with Minifield not being able to play and then bringing in Harris. It doesn't change my mind on how good or how not so good Arkansas is going to be. I'm going to still feel the same way about them. They're going to be a team that's going to be competing for uh, a very long trip in March Madness. They're going to be a top 15 team. Uh, they got all the they got the tools. They definitely have the star power, and they got the experience because that's another thing too. That maybe uh, we can, if you're looking again, glass half full, but they have the experience of guys to be able to kind of take them to another step and to another level. You're not gonna have to worry about well, we got these guys that are on the bench that may be skilled, that may have you know some really good things about them, but they're freshmen, true freshmen. They're 18 years old. They're not ready for this. But it's kind of like the balancing act. Would you rather have a true freshman with upside, not and, and some and some skills, but very raw, or would you rather have? And again, we're talking about bench players. Or would you rather have on the bench experienced guys, three, four year guys, who may not have the upside, may not have the numbers, may not have the the skill sets, but can do what the coaches need them to do, can, can step in and not have any moments that's too big for them and be physical bodied enough to take on the SEC. You know, which would you rather have? Well, you know what they say, you know, one in the, on one hand and in the other and see which one fills up, kind of which, uh, which one it's about. But uh, I'd rather personally have someone that's experienced, just knowing it from what it's looked like before with Musselman's teams. Give a, give a guy that's got experience over a, a true freshman with, very raw abilities and uh, may have a high upside. I've always felt that way. I still feel that way. And I think that Arkansas is still going to be in just fine when it comes to their basketball team once it's all said and done. Uh, folks, I got to remind you all that this episode is brought to you by Mark Hell from Fayetteville to El Dorado and everywhere in between. Mark Hell has been helping Arkansas small business community for over 30 years. Mark Hell is a global specialty insurer with a truly people first approach. And to them, insurance is more than just a piece of paper. It's a promise to help people get back on their feet. We spend a third of our lives working, so on the job, injuries can be expected. You work hard and to build your business, so it's important to make sure that you and your employees have the right insurance coverage. Whether you're new to the business or celebrating your 25th year anniversary, whether you have one employee or a thousand employees, Markel Insurance aims to help you understand your workers' compensation insurance needs. So find a local independent agent to get a free workers' compensation insurance quote today at markhellinsurance.com slash locked on. That's M-A-R-K-E-L insurance.com slash locked on. Markell, insuring America's small businesses since 1930. Insurance carrier, coverage, dividends, and services availability may vary by state. Markell is a registered trademark of Markell Group Incorporated. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Uh, we know over the weekend uh, there was the uh, Hogwild Hangout, at least the time of this recording of this podcast. Haven't uh, seen a whole lot as far as uh, you know any sort of major news coming from it. Uh, I think the latest thing is that Arkansas ha did have a commitment from uh, Marcus Wimberly, who is from Boxite, which is pretty crazy. He had a dream of being an Arkansas Razorback, and now he's been able to officially commit, and he was there for the Hogwild Hangout recruiting event. And you see him, he's 6'1", he's 183, and you're like, and he doesn't, you know, does he even rank on the 2025 class star rankings, at least not as of right now? So it's like, well, what, what in the world, what is this? Well, here's what's crazy. I was looking at his offers. Well, first of all, let's look at his look at his thing. He's got he ran a four five forty and he jumped thirty eight inches in the vertical leap and ten feet two inches in the broad jump at the Arkansas camp. And when he did that, he received uh, a scholarship from Arkansas. And I was looking at his offers. He had offers to Memphis, UAPB, Sam Houston State, and Tennessee Martin, and Michigan. One of those is not like the other. And Arkansas, obviously, where he committed. But that, I thought that was really fascinating. And we know that coaches can sometimes, you know, pull some shenanigans when as far as who they offer, who they don't offer, who they want to have on their, on their squad, and who they don't. Like, you know, we see that stuff all the time. But, like, just seeing that, that it was like all those schools and then Michigan. 
okay, whatever works. But that's pretty much it at the time, again, the time of this recording, as far as uh, what's happened. And apparently uh, Marcus Woodson, the co-defense coordinator, has been Wimberley's uh, lead recruiter. And he's apparently all excited about being a Razorback, too. So that's, that's always big news. Always like it when the in-state kids get, get that opportunity. Because who knows, maybe they, they really stand out because of that fact. Might be something that really changes things. So, but yeah, I mean, that's really as far as the big news goes for Arkansas. That was it. I mean, you got the basketball thing, you got the football thing. I know fall camp starts up this week. In fact, I got an email just uh, earlier today about the coach's availability for the media. It says, uh, Coach Pittman will preview preseason camp opening on Wednesday at 2 p.m. And Coach Souders. The uh, strength and conditioning coach will recap the team's summer conditioning program also on Wednesday. Both coaches will be available and available on via, uh, via Zoom. So it's at 2 p.m. on Wednesday. I'm all for it. I can't wait. Can't wait for it all to go down. And so that's uh, really when the official start of fall camp, and we'll have some updates from that and some, uh, some different stuff as far as actually things to talk about instead of just, hey, what do you think? Or what's the predictions? Or what, what are we hearing? What do you think? Like, I, I love the fact that people ask me this question all the time, and it's great when they're like, so I think the Hogs are going to be this year. Like, I love that question because it's fun. It's good discussion. But it's at the point where I'm like, all right, let's, let's move on from that. Let's move on from it just being a, what do you think? What do you think? Of, what do you think the Hogs are going to do? Well, let's, let's actually talk about specifics. Let's get to that point. That's what I like. I like doing that. But it'll be here before we know it. So much fun. Can't wait. Appreciate everybody listening in on Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter, BuzzJohnNeighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.